Dinosaur Chicken, Chicken Embryos with Dinosaur Snouts Created by Scientists Welcome back to Quick Watch. Today we will discuss how scientists created a chicken with dinosaur-like features. Talk of a chickenosaurus lit up the science world last week when researchers announced they had modified the beak of a chicken embryo to resemble the snout of its dinosaur ancestors. In a groundbreaking experiment, scientists have transformed chicken embryos to mimic the snout and palate configuration similar to that of small dinosaurs like Velociraptor and Archaeopteryx. No, it's not a publicity stunt for the upcoming Jurassic World. Instead, a team of Yale and Harvard scientists wanted to study how beaks appeared as dinosaurs started evolving into birds around 150 million years ago. According to the lead authors of a study published in the journal Evolution, the team did not set out to create a dino chicken per se. Bart Anjan Bilar of Yale University in New Haven and R. Kadab Zanov of Harvard University in Cambridge, U.S., initially needed to see how the bird's mouth, an extremely vital piece of bird life structures that have been pivotal for their prosperity, evolved. Whenever you examine an important evolutionary transformation, you want to learn the underlying mechanism. Our goal here was to understand the molecular underpinnings of an important evolutionary transition, not to create a dinosaur chicken simply for the sake of it, Bilar added. Discovering an instrument to reproduce components of dinosaur physiology has been a subject of famous interest, since the time the possibility that birds developed from dinosaurs arose in the 19th century, when researchers found the fossil of an early bird-like animal called Archaeopteryx. Similar to other fossils more recently discovered, the animal had wings and feathers, yet it likewise looked a ton like a dinosaur. However, these early birds didn't look the same as present-day ones. Especially, instead of beaks, they had snouts, like those of their dinosaur ancestors. To understand how one changed into another, Bular's group has been altering the subatomic processes that make up a beak in chickens. I wanted to know what the beak was skeletally, functionally and when this major transformation occurred from a normal vertebrate snout to the very unique structures used in birds, Bular said. While attempting to do precisely that, the group managed to create a chicken embryo with a dinosaur-like snout and palate, similar to that of small feathered dinosaurs like velociraptors. The team started by trawling through changes in the ways genes are expressed in the embryos of chickens and several other animals including mice, alligators, emus, turtles, and lizards. Such a thorough investigation of some of the major animal groups revealed that birds have a unique cluster of genes related to facial development that is lacking in non-beaked creatures. When scientists silenced these genes, the beak structure returned to its ancestral state, as did the palatine bone of the roof of the mouth, as shown in the picture. They found that two proteins, FGF and WNT, were expressed differently in birds and reptiles. By blocking those proteins in the chicken embryos, they were able to produce a snout very similar to the one sported by small dinosaurs like Velociraptor and Archaeopteryx. To achieve this genetic adjustment, the team isolated the protein that will continue to develop the beak. Then, they suppressed these proteins using small beads coated with inhibitory substances. When bones begin to develop inside the egg, the bones of these animals are short and round, rather than the elongated fusion beak found in bird skeletons. Although Bular has no plans or ethical approval to hatch the snouted chickens, he believes they would have been able to survive just fine. These are not drastic modifications, Bular explained. They are far less weird than many breeders developed by chicken enthusiasts and breeders. The rest of the animal looked okay, the rest of the animal looks good, but it needs to be carefully considered from an ethical point of view. In another similar experiment, João Botelho, a researcher at the University of Chile, successfully managed to genetically reconstruct an elongated fibula in a bird embryo. Botelho uses bird fibula, a thin bone that runs along the length of the lower leg. In modern birds, this bone does not extend to the ankle, but in their dinosaur ancestors, it did. Botelho's team also discovered that modern bird embryos originated from this ancestral characteristic. However, over time, the fibula is greatly shortened, and the fibula of an adult bird is small and fragmented, rather than a long, hollow fibula. With this information, all the researchers have to do is suppress the genes that allow this bone to grow at the embryonic level. Similarly, the goal of the researchers is not to bring dinosaurs back to life. Instead, they want to understand the evolution of birds at the molecular level in an unprecedented way. Another person experimenting with the so-called chicken dinosaur is Jack Horner, the curator of paleontology at the Museum of the Rockies and a professor at Montana State University. As a scientific consultant for Jurassic Park, he was also a visionary of creating a genetically modified domestic fowl with the teeth, claws, and long tail of a small carnivorous dinosaur. His team has been working to lengthen the chicken's tail at the embryo level because all animal embryos have more bones on the tail when in the womb or egg. 
Horner is determined to create a dinosaur chicken hybrid, which he claims will be nothing more than a genetically modified chicken. He also admits that while creating an elongated tail in a bird embryo is not difficult, whether the adult bird will be able to use it is a different story. Predatory non-avian dinosaurs also had dexterous fingers for grasping prey, implying that an adult bird may require a lot of muscular and nervous retweaking in order to be able to use these new features. Horner has long supported the idea of modifying a chicken to look like a dinosaur, and unlike the researchers on the latest study, he actually wants to raise a live one. And why stop there? By understanding how and when to modify certain molecular mechanisms, countless changes could be within reach. As Horner pointed out, a glue-in-the-dark unicorn is not out of the question. So, despite the fact that several scientists have been working in tandem to unlock the mysteries of avian evolution, there are still unanswered questions. However, you should keep an eye out for the next big breakthrough in genetics. Bular believes that in 15 or 20 years, we will have all of the tools and information needed to hatch a living, breathing dino chicken that runs around snatching prey in its toothy snout like a little velociraptor. This is not theoretical, he emphasizes. I'm not talking about a half century here, I'm talking about decades. It will take place. Make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you can watch more videos like this. Thanks for watching.